Can you believe that we are celebrating the first full year and one week of It's a Rap's existence? Praise the Lord for the freedom of speech and expression we still have in this country. Because those things that have been happening in the dark are seeing the light. And like our president said, this is the year of reckoning. Just ask Mugabe, Zuma, Ekanjo and Madame Pendukeni. It's a brand new day out here. Thank you for watching this episode of It's a Wrap. In this episode, the Ovaherero Traditional Authority state their case on the reparations negotiations with Germany, Ease explains the rationale behind his inspiring Independence Day video, and an update on pregnant teenager Ndapandula, poor and challenged, but touching Namibian hearts. The long and arduous road that has been traversed in the name of justice for the descendants of the genocide that occurred here seems to finally have reached a head. I asked the spokesperson of the Ovahero Traditional Authority, Wadhuva Kawumbi, just how it came to be that both government and the organization he represents are both in negotiations with the Germans. Um, you see the Ovahero Traditional Authority, as the name says, is the traditional authority for the Ovahero people. And, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the leadership of the uh, Paramount Chief uh, Advocate uh, Vekwiru Koro. So what happened is that uh, the previous uh, Paramount Chief, uh, Dr. Kwaima Rilwako, the late uh, Dr. Kwaima Rilwako, he uh, initiated this uh, motion in Parliament in 2006, which was then unanimously adopted in Parliament. The motion essentially uh, said the Namibian government should facilitate a discussion between Germany and the affected communities in terms of the reparations for the genocide that was uh, perpetrated, as we know, from 1904 to 1908. But then what happened is that after the resolution was uh, passed in the National Assembly, then government then went ahead and they started to engage directly with the, with the German government. And then they appointed the special envoy, Dr. Zen Gaviru, as a special envoy. So our inquiries about what then happened about the victim community is actually directly engaging Germany with government as a facilitator. That those pleas unfortunately did not, uh, did not find favor. So what then happened is that the Vario Trajan Authority then wrote directly to Germany to say, look, the Germany must uh, negotiate directly with the victim communities. And they gave them a deadline, I think it was uh, I think around 2015, <clears throat> because it, it, it uh, needed to coincide then with the, uh, with the, remember the extermination order that was issued by General von Trotter on the 2nd of October 1904. So when the Germans did not respond, then the Euros decided to, 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 to lodge um, or to launch a uh, law, a class action lawsuit in the Southern District Court of the um, United States of America in New York. So that is how it started then the, the legal case. Uh, on the other hand, then government also continued with their negotiations with Germany um, under the leadership, of course, of uh, Dr. Z. Gaviru as a special envoy, and Germany appointed uh, Mr. Polens as the special envoy from the German side. I ask Kaumbi whether he attributes Germany's reluctance to engage this issue to arrogance. Yes, I mean, those are the sort of words that one could use, um, but for <laughs> sake of distance, I'm trying to stay away from those kind of words, but, but one could actually be, be tempted to use those kind of words to say, look, um, but of course they've been, because you see, there's this, uh, what we have used is a, a, a law in the U.S. called the Alien Tort uh, Statute. It's a, it's, a, it's a law that allows uh, non-U.S. citizens, uh, aliens, non-U.S. citizens, to take on a, a government institution, a state actor, for violation you know, of, their, of, their, of their rights, especially in the violation of international law. It's an old law, um, but there's also another law called the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, you know, which is what Germany is using. So that is the law that, that gives immunity to all foreign states, especially friendly states towards the U.S. But then there are also exceptions in that law that they look if there are about, about six or different types of uh, exceptions that can be used in order to waive the immunity of those states. So Germany, of course, used this FSIA to, to, to apply for immunity. Uh, but then, of course, we counteracted that by using the exceptions. You know, we said, look, these exceptions actually apply in this case, so therefore Germany uh, is not entitled to immunity. So that is where the tussle is now legally. So when that has to be first sorted out, if the judge rules in our favor, then the case continues. If, um, if she rules in Germany's favor, then that's the end of the case, unless we, of course, appeal. You see, what Germany did is that Germany had, up to now, been refusing to accept the service of summons because they uh, somehow they did not recognize uh, this process, so they refused to, to accept summons. Uh, but then, of course, we followed different processes until we followed the, the, the Hague Convention, also where we served uh, summons through the U.S. State Department that then served summons actually on, on Germany in, in, in Germany. 
And um, so this time around when they realized that this, this matter is actually progressing because we were preparing actually to, to request a um, default judgment, to actually file for a default, a default judgment against Germany. And then I think then they, they woke up. They then instructed their lawyers to represent them. But then what they then did is to say they, they wanted the case to be dismissed for lack of jurisdiction because they feel that they are a sovereign state. Um, there's no way that they can be tried by a lower court in another country. So that was the argument. And uh, unfortunately, this was dismissed because they didn't follow the proper procedures. Um, but they were still given an opportunity to relaunch their, their, their application to dismiss. So this was again done on the 25th of January. And it is continuing. So our lawyers then had to reply to that by amending the, the initial complaint. So that has been done. And uh, so the process will now take its course. And of course, the, the motion will be heard. And then it will be decided whether, in fact, um, their arguments hold water or not.